And open your Bibles, if you would please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we'll begin in the 13th verse, for context, since we've been away from this for a few weeks, and read down through the end of the chapter. Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast unto the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Let's look to our Lord now in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love to us, mercy and grace and watch care over us. I thank you, our Father, for the, the, the wonderful day that you have blessed us with. I thank you for uh, the, your great blessings that you have given unto us as individuals, as families, and as members of this body of Christ. And Father, I thank you for the members of Grace Baptist Church. I thank you for uh, the members that are here tonight, their faithfulness in coming to these services and Lord, we pray that you would bless them abundantly for the efforts that it takes to be able to come to the house of the Lord. And Father, we know we're here not, they're here not, not because of me, not because uh, of any great thing that I have done, but Lord, because of an obedience and a love and a desire to want to serve you. And, beloved, and Lord, I'm so thankful that's what I believe and why I believe each of these members are here tonight. Lord, I, I don't think I could ask for anything more. And Father, we do pray that others would be burdened and, and that they would come to the house of the Lord and that they'd be excited about the work of the Lord and that we would all be excited about uh, the presence of God in our lives, the presence of God in this church. And Father, I pray that you would just, just be with each and every one of us, that we would be a light of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, again, in our individual lives and those that we come in contact with. And that we as a church body here in Mount Vernon, Ohio, Lord, that you would help, uh, help us to be a beacon here in this community of the truth of Jesus Christ. I ask, Father, that you be with me tonight as I serve, and may you give me liberty and unto Vermont High to present thy word of truth and in love. I ask, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins. May thy will be done. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Don't have an overly fancy title for the message tonight. And so, given the context of where we'll actually be going with, which is verses 21 through 23, I probably used a title very similar to this in the past, but I will ask the question, are you truly saved? Are you truly saved? Well, we are close to the end. I have now read the remainder of Matthew 7. 
course, I have no intentions of finishing the chapter tonight, but probably next week or the week after. And then, Lord willing, I think that we will do some sort of review because it's been, uh, we're already on lesson 39 and we've come a long way in studying chapters 5 throughout. I read tonight, now getting into the message, I read tonight context. So I brought you back up and we started in verse 13 and I did that because as we have learned throughout the duration of our teachings on the Sermon on the Mount, that context matters. And the Lord, as he is teaching to the disciples, as he's teaching to us, is continuing to really add to the truths that he has laid down. I mean, over and over again, I know that I have said that throughout the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the words that we read again tonight in verses 21 through 23 of Matthew chapter 7, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And when we read it in the context of learning about the wide gate and the straight gate, and we learn that in the context then of, of the, the warning against false prophets in verse 15, beware of false prophets. So the Lord is clearly saying to us that there are false prophets. I mean, he's not saying beware if there be some. It's beware of false prophets. And we go down and we continue to see about fruit and trees and all these different things. And there's no break, once again, again, that's what I said at the beginning of chapter 7, I thought there was a break, there's no break, then, so, in lieu of, and I would say, as speaking about the false prophets, here is a message to those that falsely bear the name of Christ. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So here we have the false prophets that are out there thinking they're doing things in the name of Christ. So not everyone that simply says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. We see here by context that these again are the claims of those who are the false prophets that we looked at a few weeks ago. And indeed, Probably not just those that have the, you know, that are the, uh, uh, the false prophets, but those who profess out a false living um, to the Lord. And I'll explain that as the message goes on. So again, in the context of the Sermon on the Mount, when we talk about the broad way, we talk about the good fruit and the bad fruit, we talk about the false prophet, no matter how much they do, if they do not, and I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself, it's going to be like the first point of the message, have a personal relationship through the blood of Jesus Christ by just simply saying the name of Christ does not save them and give them an entrance into heaven. When you look at, again, verses 21 and 22, you see a theme throughout these verses of 21 and 22. And that theme throughout these verses, the amount of times that we either specifically say or see the name of Lord or see the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord, or that these people say they do certain things in the name of Christ. Have not we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out, uh, have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. So what the false prophets are doing, what the false professors of Jesus Christ are doing, is again, of course, following the wide way, the wide gate, and saying that it's all done in the name of Christ, in thy name, Lord, Lord. 
But just, again, because someone is saying that they're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ does not at all mean that it is by the authority and the blessing of Jesus Christ. So, for example, there are a lot of false prophets today that say they do things in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's say that I or someone that says they bear the name of Jesus Christ were to walk into a, a crowded facility and just start shooting everybody in there and saying that I'm doing this in the name of Jesus Christ. That is a blasphemy in the name of Jesus Christ. That is, that is something that has not been blessed or authoritative of God. That is, that is just using Christ's name in a way of, Lord, Lord, have we not done this? Have I not done this in thy name? Well, you, you may have done it in the name, but just because you said the name does not mean that you are a saved child of God. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, he that work iniquity. <coughs> False prophets out there today are not, listen, are not giving their message, quote unquote, under the true authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet they say that they are. And we'll dive into that a little bit deeper, of course, when we get to verse 22. Today, we, as we studied again a few weeks ago, we looked at, um, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing, right, who try to portray this image of, of Christianity, of saying the right things and doing the right things. But it's all about, again, are you truly saved by the grace and through the blood of Jesus Christ? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So we're going to look at it tonight. Salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then secondly, the desperation of the false prophets. The desperation that we see here. All right. Salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not everyone, verse 21, that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. We are taught simply here that the claims of men and women on that day, right? Many will say to me in that day. So the claims of the men and women on that day, the claims that they say they know Christ, the claims that they say that they have prophesied in Christ's name, that they have done works in Christ's name, just by the claims and by saying the name of Christ and by saying the name of Lord absolutely means nothing in their eternal salvation. Their eternal salvation is not based upon their ours. Salvation is not based upon what we have done, but it is completely based upon what Jesus Christ our Lord has done when he died upon the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for our sin. So in fact, whatever we claim today, whatever we say our relationship is with Christ, whatever we audibly say it to be, doesn't mean a thing if it's not, if it's not that we have been truly saved by grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. I can say until I am blue in the face, red in the face, purple in the face, whatever in the face, that Jesus Christ, I can say his name over and over again. I can say, Lord, Lord, I can say it over and over again. But Jesus Christ must be our Lord and Savior. He must be our Savior in order for us to see and to be able to go uh, unto heaven for all eternity. So no matter, verse 22, we'll go back to verse 22 a little bit later, but again, no matter how much we claim we have done for the Lord, no matter what we say, it is our personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, <clears throat> I could, and, and thankfully, by the grace of God, I know and believe that I am saved by the grace of Almighty God. Well, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to say that in the second part of the message. Okay, here we go. So, salvation, again, is not just saying a few things in Jesus' name. It's not about a lifetime of preaching. It's not about a lifetime of living a lie. It is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what salvation is about. 
Many, again, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's all about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, I do have a, a lot of verses tonight in regards to salvation through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So again, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils in thy name, done many wonderful works, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we are not saved by works, and it's confirmed. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Right? So, the Word of God, uh, again, tells us you know, what we need to know. Not of works. Romans, chapter 10. I know you knew I was going here. It's okay. Romans, chapter 10. And... Uh, Verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess, or uh, yeah, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there is, again, a calling upon the name of the Lord, as the Word of God says, that the Lord Jesus Christ brings us to the place of repentance, right? Brings us to the place of confessing that we are sinners in the eyes of God and that there is nothing we can do for ourselves. There is nothing we can do uh, works-wise for ourselves in order for us to see uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. So it's all about, as we call upon the name of the Lord, that we're not just using the name of the Lord in hopes that we are saved, but we're calling upon the name of the Lord because God has given us the ability to repent of our sins and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save us from our sins so that we are truly saved. I don't know if that made any sense, but I hope that it did. The false professors, the false prophets, the false teachers are trusting God in their works, in their openings of their big cathedrals or the big uh, organizations, the big churches, the big things, the big orphanage, the big, you know, all this stuff. And they say, well, it's done in the name of Christ. But missing a huge point. Saying it's done in the name of Christ, but not because... They are in the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning they know him as Lord and Savior. It's mine. So, major difference in being just saying the name of Christ and being in and known by the Lord Jesus Christ. The very sad reality of the words are Matthew 7, 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Beloved, please listen tonight. What we're seeing here from our Lord is it's not all about having the right words. It's not all about having and doing what we think are the right things. Not of works, the Bible says in Ephesians but it's all about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is so important for us to understand. In the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. The word of God says here. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Period. Exclamation point. Mm -hmm. It is all about the blood. Are you truly saved through the blood of Jesus Christ? By the blood of Jesus Christ. 
In the book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. God's word says this. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. In 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. <clears throat> For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we ask ourselves, are we just going through the motions, right? Are we just saying, Lord, Lord? Are we saying the right things? Are we trying to do the right things in hopes of gaining eternal life, in hopes of gaining heaven? You see, salvation is a free gift. It is a free gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's not about just going out there and saying, I've done this, Lord, I've done that, Lord, I've done this. But it's all about, it. it's all about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ through his blood. The verses tell us in 1 Peter 18 and 19 there in chapter 1 that it was his own blood. I don't think that any of us will ever truly understand the depth of that statement. That Christ sacrificed his perfect, pure, sinless blood for my wretched, disgusting, sinful person that I am. And he gave his blood for us. But that is what Jesus Christ has done for his children. He shed his blood for our sins. And so, how it's just so phenomenal when we think about what he has done for us. In the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, and I'll read verses 5 through 11. <clears throat> Philippians 2, beginning in verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things under the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Which ties in perfectly with that verse there in verse, verse 23. Depart from me, I never knew you. So I say that again to say it's not just about saying that we do things in Jesus' name, but that we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then yes, yes, of course, we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? Philippians 2.13. We are to work out our salvation. We are to work for the Lord. We are able to do many wonderful things for the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. So this, this verse here, again, in context, when we read in context, talking about the false prophets, the false prophets are going to say, Lord, Lord, have we not done this? Have we not done that? We're just going to get to the second part of the message. I'm almost there. That's not what saves us. But after we've been saved by the grace of Almighty God and not the intent of this message, that absolutely we are to work for the Lord. And we certainly can do things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it's not just by saying necessarily those, you know, that saves, right? All right, so let's get into it. This the second part, the desperation of the false professors. So as we look further into the passage, we find, again, those who claim to be 
to be the disciple of Christ falsely and say, Lord, Lord, that's as good as it's going to get for them without a personal relationship and a covering by the blood of Jesus Christ. We see, and we, and we read in Philippians a few moments ago, that every tongue shall confess. Every tongue shall confess. We see here, and again, our Lord says everything just the way He means to say it and, and everything, but many will say to me, verse 22, in that day, Lord, Lord, you almost hear Him say, they're, they're in desperation, Lord, Lord, now wait a second, hold on. Haven't we done this? In thy name. Haven't we done this in thy name? Haven't we done many wonderful works? And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So back a few weeks ago, you remember in verses 15 through 20, as I read them tonight, we talked a lot about how a, a, a good tree cannot bear forth bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear forth good fruit. So our Lord has said that the fruit of the false prophet was not good and certainly no good for God. So as I said, these false professors are out there trying to do, again, many, they're saying they're doing many wonderful things in the name of the Lord, but not by the authority of God. So these false prophets, these false professors uh, are claiming to have done marvelous signs and wonders in the name of Christ. And yet Christ says to them, depart from me. Verse 18, again, it described it to us. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Many in our day that we're living now have put their faith in some kind of spiritual experience instead of the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal, only, and all-sufficient Savior. Many, especially in the charismatic circles, can be seen to put so much emphasis on spiritual experience, but they don't talk enough about the blood of Jesus Christ. That we just, we're, we're neglecting that. And so then we get to verse 23, as I have already read many times. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Beloved, a humbling, sober thought. As we think about Jesus Christ, as we think about salvation, as we think about what those words would sound like. You say, well, they're just, you know, you're just able to say them up there. You're, you're just able to say that. Well, as I said, I know by the grace of God that He has saved me uh, from my sins, and so I'm thankful that I won't hear these words. I can say that for myself. I can't say that for anyone else because I don't know. I can look at your fruit, but I can't truly know your heart. Only the Lord Jesus Christ knows your heart. But I can tell you this. I know there is not a person, because I know what the book says, the Bible, about the eternal state of those that do not profess and know Christ as Savior. And so I can say this by the authority of the Word of God. It will be a terrible, horrible thing to hear from our Lord. And He says simply, I never knew you. Depart from me. That's it. At that point, you are not going to plead your case. You are not going to again go backwards and say, but, but, but. I've done, haven't I? Whoa, Lord, I've been going to church. I've been giving my tithes. I've been doing this. Hey, whoa. The Lord says, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that worked iniquity. But Lord, I've preached. But Lord, I've taught. But Lord, I've done all of this. The Lord says simply, depart from me. Beloved, I think for me, even as now I'm, not, I'm preaching this, I think these words are more, more impactful than even when I was studying it, how humbling those words are.
especially for those of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ and we know a little bit about the Word of God that tells us that ultimately if you know not the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will spend eternity in the lake of fire. Not a, not a good thing. So, do not rely on works. Do not rely on these wonderful works and just saying the name of Jesus Christ. It's all about knowing the, the Lord Jesus Christ, as I've been saying throughout the duration of this message. It is belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, that matters. Yes, work for the Lord after we have been saved, but to be saved is the most important thing. When people come into these doors, as I was preaching again uh, the last Lord's Day about experiencing the presence of God, we're not bringing people in here to disciple them all in a half of 30 seconds, right? It's not about, you've got to know this, you've got to know that, you cannot wear, you know, this, you shouldn't wear that, you better wear this. It's not about any of that. All that matters to somebody that walks in these doors is that we tell them about Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then teach them all things. <laughs> somebody could walk through our doors, beloved, and I mean this. Somebody could walk through these doors now, t next time we meet, next Wednesday, a year from now, two years from now, uh, without the image of knowing Christ at all, right? Piercings and all kinds of things, wearing leather, who knows what it might be. And we might feel really awkward, we might feel really uncomfortable, we might say, there is no way they should be in these services. Yes, there is a way, and God put them here, we're going to preach to them the gospel, because that's what they need, they need to hear about Jesus Christ. It's not about just standing up here saying, we're doing wonderful works. Because the reality is, and then I will profess unto them, these are the words of our Lord, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So, it is all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. As I said, at that time, at that day, right? He's talking in that day. There'll be no argument. There'll be no pointer case to be made. But are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? That is the only question worth answering right now. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you truly saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? The great news is, Jesus saves. <laughs> Jesus saves. He's able to save. He's able to save a wretch like me. Paul says that he was the chiefest of sinners. God saved him. Jesus saves. So I ask again, are you truly saved? Have you been to Jesus for the blood of God? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? May God use his word and add the blessing to it. Tonight is my prayer. And certainly we pray that if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that this would be the day of salvation. If you have any questions, we can help you in any way. We offer ourselves to you. Thank you for your attention to the Word of God. And as I said, if we can be helped in any way, we offer ourselves. And shall we stand to be dismissed in a word of prayer?